Family Theater presents Maureen O'Sullivan and Ted DeCosia. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Ted DeCorsia in The Kid from Scratch Gravel. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Maureen O'Sullivan. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight, family theater takes great pleasure in presenting The Kid from Scratch Gravel, starring Ted DeCourse here as Skip, with Billy Balkum as Lefty. My name is Commodore Dewey Donovan, but everybody calls me Skip. The Skip comes from the fact that I'm Skipper, a manager of a big league baseball club known as the Panthers. Two years ago, we finished a loud seventh. And last year, well, we were in the cellar and things were really tough. Then one day, along about mid-season, I get a report on a kid pitcher that one of our scouts, Snuffy Casper, is high on. A southpaw named... Lefty Partlow. His real name's Larkin Partlow, and he lives in a whistle stop down in Arkansas called Scratch Gravel. Stop kidding, Snuffy. I ain't kidding, Skip. It's Scratch Gravel. You can look it up in the dictionary. Skip it. How old is this part long? 19. He'll be 20 next February. Now, what's he done? What's he done? All he's done is win 17 and lose one so far this year playing semi-pro. And the only one he drops, he should have win. Well, that's semi-pro. What's he got? He's got a fastball with a hop on it like you ain't seen since Dizzy Dean come up to the cards from Houston. And he's got a curve that breaks off as sharp as Tommy Bridges' ever did when Tommy was in his prime. Oh, cut it out, Snuffy. The man never lived that could fog it in like old Diz and bend it like Tommy Bridges. Yeah, but this kid can. He mixes up that number two with his fast stuff till they break their back swinging. Okay, okay, I'll be a sucker. Sign him up. Well, somehow or other, Snuffy signs up this part low kid, and we order him to report to our training camp in Florida. When I first take a gander at him, I figure somebody's pulling a gag on me. He's got hay behind his ears and cordwood on his breath. Hank Milligan, our veteran catcher, says to me, How's for warming up this part low kid, Skip, and seeing what he's got, if anything? Okay. Uh, Lefty, toss a few to Hank here. Yes, sir. I'll go out with you, Hank. This kid's got all he's cracked up to be. He can maybe help us go places this year. Mm-hmm. I seen a lot of spring daisies bloom, and I also seen them fade. All right, now take it easy, Lefty. Don't forget it's a long time till October. Yes, sir. I won't use hardly none of my sweat. Okay, just lob it in. Ow! Ooh, that crazy busher like to tore my hand off, Skip. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the matter with you, Potlo? You trying to rip your arm loose at the elbow? Uh, you don't need to fret yourself none about my arm, Mr. Donovan. I've been chunking rocks at the squirrels all winter. <laughs> oh, chucking rocks at the squirrels. That wasn't even half my swift, Mr. Donovan. Well, then save it a little later. Uh, let's see you bend one. Yes, yeah, sir. Better watch sharp, Mr. Milligan. This jug handle of mine kind of dips real rapid. Why, you... Lesson wise guy, for 12 years now I've been hatching, I've been catching real pictures. Hold it, Hank. <laughs> All right, Lefty, curb one. Hey, that almost got away from you, didn't it, Hank? So help me skip, I never seen a hook breaks a shot. Yeah, it looked real good. You got anything else, Lefty? A slider or a knuckler? Well, I've been practicing on a screwball, Mr. Donovan, but I ain't got it down to expert yet. Now well, let's look it over anyway. Yes, sir. All right, come on, let's have it, kid. Hey, what'd you... Hey, what happened? Hey, look at your hand, Hank. What? 
They tore a fingernail plumb off. I never even... I, I never even seen it break, Skip. I never seen it break. <laughs> So Lefty Partlow's a spring sensation. But as we travel north to start the season, I still can't figure how he can break into our pitching staff as a first stringer. Jimmy Truesdell and Specs Martin show the form they've been promising for years. Then we make our first home appearance at Panther Park. Outside the player's entrance. Paper, paper, get your car express. Hey, guy, you can't go in there. That's the player's entrance. Yes, and then I reckon I found right place. You don't look like a ball player to me. What's your name? Hitch Lefty. Uh, I mean, Hitch Larkin Partlow. Oh, you're that hot shot, that hot shot cunny thumb all the boys been writing about. Well, I ain't so sure about that. Don't you read the papers? Not no great deal, miss. Uh, mostly I just read comic books. Oh, I thought maybe I could get you for a regular customer when the team's in town. H Hi, Skip. Hiya, Polly. How's our little mascot today? <laughs> Batting 400. Say, Skip, before I waste any time cultivating this busher for a customer, what's his chances of sticking with the team? <laughs> what would you say, Polly? I don't know. It looks like a square meal wouldn't hurt him. Well, I've been eating kind of high on the hog since it dawned up with the Panthers messed up. Uh, uh, Dudley, Lefty. Miss uh, Polly Dudley, 10 years old. 11 now, Skip. All right, Miss Polly Dudley, 11 years old. The most rabid root of the Panthers ever had. You can say that again, Skip. You know, Lefty, I hope you make the grade. You're kind of nice, even if your haircut isn't exactly hip. Well, the first two weeks of the season, Lefty spends his time tearing splinters off the bench with the seat of his pants or loosening his arm out in the bullpen. Then, in Boston, Spex Martin hooks up with Chuck Stobbs in what the sports writers call an old-fashioned pitches battle. It's one to nothing favor us as we go into the first half of the ninth, and Spex has allowed the Red Sox only four scattered hits. Johnny Pesky pops to Martin. Buddy Rosa fans. The fans are filing out the exit when Steve O'Neill sends in Clyde Volmer to bat for Stobbs, and Clyde comes through with a single between third and short. On the hit and run, Don DiMaggio lines one to right that moves Volmer to third. Martin works too close on Billy Goodman and walks it, filling the bases. That brings up Ted Williams. I decide Spex has had it, and I signal the bullpen for lefty. Your attention, please. Partlow, number 37, now pitching for Martin. I go back to the bench with my fingers crossed. Hank Milligan's not catching that day, and the first thing he says is... Oh, you got your nerve, Skip, tossing in that busher in a spot like this. Williams is liable to tear his head off. It's a hunch, Hank. Yeah, I hope it ain't a funeral. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. I'm going to close my eyes. I can't look at this. A letter high fastball, and Williams never even seen it. You swing like a rusty gate. What are you doing, Theodore? Killing snakes? <laughs> he crossed him, Skip. Williams was waiting for a hook, and the kid crossed him with another fast one. Three, right, three, you're out. He's out. He crossed him again, Skip. Ted was figuring he'd waste one, and Lefty poured it right down the middle of Main Street. I've been waiting for you, Lefty. Everybody else is gone. Yeah, I reckon so. I I've been trying to tie my necktie in one of them Windsor knots like Jimmy Truesdale wears. <laughs> I can't seem to get the hang of it. <laughs> it's a mess. Lean over and I'll tie it for you right. Yeah. Gee, Hossafat, Lefty, I almost died when you fed that last fast one to Williams. Why didn't you throw one wide? Well, Williams don't swing on no bad balls, Miss Polly. I, I figured what he couldn't see, he couldn't hit. What he couldn't see? Brother, you sure hate yourself, don't you? The guy you fanned is only the best hitter in the whole league. <laughs> it ain't that, Miss Polly. It's uh, his eyes again my arm, and I just figure my arm's faster than his eyes. You know, Lefty, if anybody else said that, I'd give him the well-known bird. But with you, it's different. There. There's your tie. Oh, thank you, ma'am. 
Next time, though, mix up your stuff with Williams. He'll be waiting for some smoke, and he'll pickle it. Two days later, Jimmy Truesdell uses his twirling wrist to stop a line drive from Big Walt Drop. It's a clean break, and Jimmy's out for a couple of months. So I give Lefty Partlow a regular turn. And we do all right through the West until we move into St. Louis. And that's where the trouble starts. A man and a woman are sitting together in the lobby of a hotel where we always stay. See that kid sitting over there, Rose? The yokel with a fishbowl haircut? Yeah, that's the one. You know who he is? Well, he isn't Ronald Coleman. He's just as famous as Coleman. That's Lefty Partlow, the Panthers' sensational rookie pitcher. So what do I do? So you ankle over close to him and ask him for a match. Then you start talking to him. After that, you call me over and introduce me as your father. Yes. Daddy. Leave the comedy to Gracie Allen. Your name is Rose Travis. My name is Jay Wellington Travis, and I'm a banker. You got it? I got it, but I don't see what it's all about. You don't have to see. Do like I say. Yes. Daddy. I beg your pardon. Do you have a match? No, ma'am. I, I'm sorry, but I ain't. I don't never smoke. Oh. Well, I, I hope you'll forgive my curiosity, but haven't I seen you somewhere before? Your face is so familiar. Well, you, you ever been in Scratch Gravel, Arkansas, ma'am? Well, no, I never have. Uh, maybe you was at some baseball games out in West Texas last year. No, I know. When you mentioned baseball, it came to me in a flash. Why, you're Lefty Partlow, the Panthers' famous pitcher. <laughs> oh, Daddy will so want to meet you. He's a great admirer of yours. Mm. Do you mind? Daddy! Daddy, come here a minute, will you? Oh, this will be the greatest thrill of Daddy's life. Why, you're his hero, Mr. Partlow. Yes, what is it, my dear? You won't believe this, Daddy, but this gentleman I just happened to meet is Mr. Lefty Partlow. Well, this is a pleasure, Mr. Partlow. My name is Travis, J. Wellington Travis. Oh, I'm proud to pump your paw, Mr. Travis. Just wait till I tell my associates at the bank that this is the hand that shook the hand of the famous Lefty Partlow. Oh, shucking, Mr. Travis, I'm just old Don't country, ever boy. underrate yourself, Lefty. Modesty's an excellent trait, but sometimes it can cost you money. Now look at Dizzy Dean. He knew he was good and he told the world about it. What did it get him? Just about $100,000 for one season, that's all. Oh, you get even more than that, don't you, Mr. Partlow? Oh, shuckins, no. Mr. Andrews is paying me $5,000. What? $5,000? Why, man, those are coolie wages. But I'm sure you received a handsome bonus when you signed with the Panthers. Oh, I got $1,000. No. Oh, sure did. And I give it to my pappy to buy some mules and some other stuff we was needing for our farm. Rose, I think this young man and I must become better acquainted. With my long experience in the fields of finance, I'm sure I can be of service to him. Real service. <laughs> What gives with this rabbit twister, Joe? I just wired Benny Albert to fly out. I'm going to work the old lost wallet gimmick on the kid. What's that? Rose, your education in the less subtle forms of larceny has been sadly neglected. This is the way it works. Lefty and I find a wallet on the lobby floor. When we examine it, we find the name T. Theron Bayless stamped on it in gold. By the merest coincidence, Mr. Bayless is staying at the hotel. When we return it to him, Mr. Bayless, who happens to be an international financier and also Benny Albert... He's so grateful that he offers us a sure thing on the stock market. Well, what'll that get you? This lefty sodbuster signs up for a grant and he makes five a year. He hasn't got any dough. He doesn't need any. Did you ever stop to think what a cleanup it'd be if I got him so scared he'd throw a ball game and I knew which game it'd be? Well, that's murder, Joe. It's a fortune, baby. The way that kid's been going, every time he pitches, it's two and a half or three on the Panthers. A wad of dough on the short end wouldn't be hay, Rosie. <laughs> Gentlemen, I must offer you a reward for your honesty. While my wallet contained almost no currency, not over $600 at the most, the papers, well, frankly, they were irreplaceable. Would you say $200? Oh, we don't want any reward, Mr. Bayless. It's been a privilege to be of such slight service to a man in your position. Well, spoken like a gentleman, Mr. Travis. However, yes, I see no reason why I shouldn't let you in on the killing uh, Mr. Travis and Mr. Potlow, uh, my associates and I are cornering transatlantic copper. 
A slight investment today? Well, I could almost guarantee it would be tripled by the time the market closes. Well, I'll go for a thousand, Mr. Bayless. How about you, Lefty? <laughs> Shucking, Mr. Travis, I don't hold no such amount of cash as that. Well, then go for, say, 50. Oh, yeah, I've got 50, all right. Well, let me have it, boy. I'll triple it in three hours, or my name's not T. Theron Bayless. <laughs> Very good, Armitage. Very good. Yes. Now, let me know of any new developments. Yes, yes, I'll be here at the hotel. Goodbye, Armitage. My congratulations, Mr. Travers and Mr. Partlow. Your profit, Mr. Travers, is $3,000. Hmm. And yours, Mr. Partlow, is one hundred and fifty. dollars Oh, my, thanks. Oh, not at all. Oh, uh, permit me to pay you now out of my own pocket. And my broker can reimburse me tomorrow. Yes, the crooks played lefty like a fisherman plays a rainbow trap. The kid keeps buying stocks, or thinks he does, and of course he makes a profit on every deal. Out on the pitching rubber, he's pure poison. When we hit Boston in August, he's won 18 and dropped only five. Mr. Travis has been following the team from city to city, and he checks in at our hotel. He phones Lefty and asks him to come to his room. Lefty, how'd you like to make a real cleanup? Well, uh, how much would a real cleanup be, Mr. Travis? What would you say to $20,000? $20,000? $20, yeah. Glory be. I could send it to Pappy and he could buy himself a ranch down in Texas, just like he's been wanting to since always. I just got a phone call from Mr. Bayless. There's a certain stock, I can't tell you what it is, of course, that he and his associates have rigged. I want you to buy $5,000 worth. Oh, but, Mr. Travis, I, I ain't got no $5,000. I'll fix that. I've always been your friend. A good friend, haven't I, son? I ain't never had none that was no better. Thank you, Lefty. Now, what are friends for if they can't help each other? So here's what I'm going to do. I'll put up the $5,000 for you, and all you have to do is give me a note for it. After you collect your profits, you can pay me back, and I'll tear up the note. Mm. I ain't so sure, Mr. Travis. Nonsense, my boy. I've got it all made out. Now, you sign right here, and I'll take care of everything. I'm afraid I have bad news for you, Lefty. You mean that stock didn't go up like you said it would? No, we've dropped every penny we invested. But, Mr. Travis, five thousand... Now, don't worry, son. I'll hold your note, and you can pay me whenever you're able. <laughs> A week or so later, we come home for a stand against the Eastern Clubs, opening with the Yankees. When Lefty checks into the hotel where he and most of the other single fellows stay, Mr. Travis is waiting for him. When do you plan to pay me the money you owe me, Lefty? Why, shuckings, Mr. Travis. You know I ain't got no such amount of cash as $5,000. You told me there wasn't no hurry. When did I tell you that? Well, when we was in Boston. You said you'd hold my note and I could pay you off whenever I was able to. I don't hold any note of yours. I have a check for $5,000 drawn on the International Trust Company of New York. What? You mean to say you don't have an account in that bank? Well, I ain't got no account nowhere in no bank. Then that's forgery, and you're headed right straight for the penitentiary. You wouldn't do that, Mr. Travis. I certainly will. Except on one condition. The next time you pitch, you better make sure you lose. But... But that ain't honest. Neither is writing a check on a bank where you don't have an account. Now think it over, Lefty. Either you lose when you start against the Yanks, or you go up the river for a long stretch. What a day that next day was. First, Lefty tells me he's sick and he can't pitch even though it's his turn. Then Hank Milligan comes to me and says... Skip! Huh? Oh, skip! I saw something last night that don't look so good. Oh, what's that, Hank? Well, when we checked in the hotel, there was a guy waiting to see Lefty. He called the guy Mr. Travis, but he was Little Joe Turk. That tin horn guy. Mm-hmm. And it sure looked like Little Joe was laying down the law to Lefty. If Little Joe Turk was to somehow have the axe on Lefty... He couldn't do it. Lefty'd get thrown out of baseball. Yeah, but the kid don't know that. After all, Skip, he's just a hay shaker that's never been around here before. I'll talk to him. No. Oh, Skip... I got some more bad news. Little Polly, you know, the kid that sells papers, 
She got took with polio while we was away. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. She's out at St. Francis Hospital. They got her in an iron lung. Joe Bearden told me. Well, has she got everything she needs? Has she got the best doctors? The ball Take club Take it easy, Skip. Uh, Joe says they couldn't treat her better if she was a queen. And that gave me the idea I needed. I called Lefty and told him I wanted him to go somewhere with me. We drove out to St. Francis Hospital, and I took him to Polly. Hi, Skip. Hi, Lefty. Gee, I was hoping you'd come to see me. How are you, honey? Still batting 400, Skip. They tell me I'll be out of this tin can in a couple of months. I got a radio here, so I only miss the ball games the first days. Gee, how's the fat, Lefty? I almost rolled over when you went four for four against Mel Parnell in Boston. Yeah, somebody told Mel I couldn't hit a high harden, so he kept a fogging them in across the letters. I guess you're the best hitting pitcher in the whole world. I take my cut. Brother, I'll say you do. And I'll bet you pin those Yankees' ears back this afternoon. Maybe, maybe, maybe I ain't a going again, the Yankees. It's your turn, isn't it? Of course, Lefty's going today. I thought you were just kidding. How's the old flipper feel, Lefty? It's all right, I guess. Watch that Gil McDougal. He's hot. And Yogi Berra. Well, look, honey, we've got to shove off. If there's anything we can do for Not you... Not a thing, Skip. Except to tear those yanks to pieces. And, Lefty, if you toss a no-hitter, will you bring me the last ball? If I do. Uh, bye, Polly. Maybe I'll be seeing you later today. Bye, Lefty. Bye, Skip. Thanks for coming to see me. Goodbye, honey. Don't worry about a thing. If Lefty doesn't beat those Yanks this afternoon, I'll send him so deep in the minors, he'll never get back. Golly, Mr. Donovan, that little old Polly's a real fan, ain't she? Yeah. She eats, breathes, and lives baseball. To her and about 10 million other American kids, baseball isn't just a game where 18 Joes in monkey suits hit and throw a little white pill around a ball yard. It's, well, the best way I can say it, it's just about the next thing to religion. And it puts an awful responsibility on every one of us that's in the game. Yeah, I reckon it sure does. Anytime one of us doesn't bear down, it hurts us and it hurts the game. But most of all, it hurts those millions of American kids who look up to us like we were a bunch of gold-plated heroes. All in all, baseball's been mighty clean. It's up to us to keep it clean, for the kids will be stars when all we are is a bunch of statistics in the record book. Maybe you never thought about it exactly that way, Lefty. No, sir. I don't reckon I never did. Mr. Donovan, I got something I just got to tell you. I don't want to hear it now. Save it till after we pour it on the Yankees. After that, maybe you can imagine how I feel when Lefty walks nine men in the first four innings and the only thing that saves us is some fancy feeling that has the crowd hanging on their seats. When Lefty tosses four straight bad ones to Vic Rashi, I go to the mound. What's the matter, kid? That's the most walks you've given all year. I don't know, Mr. Donovan. I just ain't a getting the corners. Are you sure you're aiming for them? Why, why? Now listen. Why, to sure. It. I know all about what happened. All I'm saying is this. A little girl named Polly has her ear glued to her radio out at St. Francis Hospital. Right now, she's probably dying a thousand deaths. Are you gonna let her down? Well... Don't fret yourself none about that, Mr. Donovan. I'll make them Yankees think this baseball's an aspirin tablet. What's the score, Daddy? What's the score, she asks me. I got every dime I own riding on the Yankees. And the Panthers are ahead one to nothing. And it's the first of the ninth with two out. You're as bad as that double cross and lefty park low. A no-hitter he's pitching. Mize now batting for college. Johnny Mize. Maybe he can park one. Is this Mize a good... Oh, bat? shut up and watch. Hey, that's 11 strikeouts for lefty. One more pitch and he'll shut have it. Shut up. That. What are you trying to do? Put a hex on the kid? Hey, where you going, 
Steve. Out to the hospital, Mr. Donovan. I got to give Polly that baseball I promised her. I owe it to her. Well, tell her I'll see her in a couple of days. Okay, Skip. <laughs> so all you owe that little girl is a baseball. Hmm. <laughs> now, nah, Lefty, someday you'll realize you owe her far more than that. that in this wholesome story we've just heard, Lefty owes Polly ever so much more than just a baseball. Gratitude isn't quite the right word for it. Perhaps the word is incentive. <clears throat> and I'm not so sure that every public figure, whether in sports or entertainment, hasn't the same incentive and the same obligation to those who look up to him. <clears throat> and in some cases, who actually imitate him. It has been said that the man or woman who strives for the public's favor should never forget the solemn responsibility of example. Yet, public people are only human after all, with the same tendency to frailty and to folly as anyone else. Where then can they get the inner strength that they, or that any one of us must have, to bolster our poor human weakness? Well, the answer is prayer, simply that. And since it's literally true and not mere poetic fancy, that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is in the midst of them. How much more powerful than the prayer of one individual is that of the whole family, drawing on that strength and strengthening each other. Surely such a family and each member of it will inevitably reap the benefit of loving, united prayer, rising like the incense of evening sacrifice, united to our Heavenly Father and united always to each other. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Kid from Scratch Gravel, starring Ted DeCorsia. Maureen O'Sullivan was your hostess. Billy Bauckham played Lefty. Others in our cast were Howard Culver, Herb Vigran, Anne Whitfield, Martha Shaw, Ben Weldon, and George Taylor. The script was written by Jack Mitchell, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which responds to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at this time when family theater will present James Whitmore and Jean Raymond in The Mademoiselle from Saint Antoine. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.